Hi, my name is Roger Coida. I'm a microbial ecologist. I obtained my PhD from the University of California at Berkeley and did postdoctoral research at Stanford University. I was professor at uh, Penn State University for 26 years before coming to Brigham Young University where I teach and do research. Um, most of my research has been on fungal communities. Recently I've become more interested in uh, fungal and bacterial communities in intestines and in food microbiology, especially that of miso. In the last 10 years or so, there has been a tremendous amount of interest in the communities of fungi and bacteria that live within our intestines. And the reason for that is because not only do they influence our intestinal health, but they also influence our general physical health and even our mental well-being. The connection between uh, these bacteria and fungi and our health has to do with the way they chemically process much of the food that we take into our own bodies. As they process this food, they produce a wide range of molecules that are absorbed into our bloodstream and that's what affects the rest of our bodies. When they produce beneficial molecules and nutrients that are absorbed into our bloodstream, we remain healthy. But if they produce harmful chemicals, harmful molecules, we can become diseased. When we eat healthy food, we stimulate beneficial bacteria and fungi without stimulating harmful bacteria and fungi. But when we eat unhealthy food, highly processed food or food that's high in sugar, high in fat, um, too much meat, or when we take antibiotics or certain other kinds of drugs, we stimulate the harmful bacteria and fungi, and our intestines become dysbiotic. Dysbiosis is the situation when the beneficial bacteria and fungi are outnumbered by the harmful bacteria and fungi. Some bacteria and fungi are harmful because they produce harmful molecules that are absorbed into our bloodstream. And these may cause disease, including digestive problems, diabetes, autoimmune diseases, and even cancer. Obviously, dysbiosis of intestinal microbial communities is bad. So the question is, how can we correct them? Some people hope that they can quickly correct dysbiotic intestines by taking probiotics. Probiotics are living organisms, usually bacteria, that are beneficial. Some pro probiotics come in capsule form. These probiotics are large and growing business, currently worth about $50 billion annually. Some probiotics come in the form of traditional foods, such as yogurt or kimchi. But the problem with any kind of probiotic is that the adult stomach is highly acidic in order to help process our food, digest our food, and to prevent disease, uh, disease microbes from entering the intestines. So the probiotics are mostly killed in the stomach before they can reach the intestine. Moreover, the good microbes and probiotics have a tough time competing against the bad microbes in dysbiotic intestines, especially if we do not eat a healthy diet. Probably the only permanent way to maintain a healthy intestinal microbial community is to preferentially feed the beneficial microbes, the bacteria and fungi that are good, and not the harmful ones. A healthy diet is necessary for that. If you have a poor diet, one that is high in sugar, high in processed foods, high in fat, high in meat, the only long-term way to obtain and maintain a healthy intestinal microbial community is to change your diet. That's the best way to become and stay healthy. But whether you have a healthy diet, an unhealthy diet, or something in between, there are ways to improve your gut microbial communities. The traditional Japanese diet, as opposed to the modern Japanese diet, is low in sugar, low in fat, low in meat, and low in processed foods. It also contains a high proportion of fermented foods, probably because Japan is a humid country, uh, which is conducive to the growth of microbes. Fermented foods continue to be important in Japanese food today. Probably the most popular fermented foods are miso, which is a salty soybean paste, which can be made into soup and used to make pickles, etc. Shoyu, which is called soy sauce by most people, and natto, which is fermented soybeans. During the fermentation process, the bacteria and fungi cause chemical changes to the ingredients. These chemical changes produce what are called prebiotics. Prebiotics are compounds that restore the balance to intestinal microbial communities, selecting 
good ones, harm, uh, beneficial microbes over the harmful ones. Although fermented foods do contain probiotic microbes, their major health benefits are probably derived from the prebiotic compounds. Koso is a less well-known fermented food as it is relatively new in Japan. Uh, soy sauce and miso are thousands of years old and came from China. Koso has been made and consumed in Japan for only about a century. Koso is the product of the fermentation of various ingredients that may include fruits, vegetables, seaweeds, and mushrooms. Basically, it's made in the same way that miso and soy sauce are made. The ingredients are mixed with selected microbes, including bacteria and fungi. Fermentation is allowed to occur for a certain period of time, during which the ingredients undergo chemical changes to form prebiotics. There are many types of koso that are available today. Some forms are dried, others are thick pastes, some are liquid. The prebiotic effects of koso include less inflammation of the intestine, improved digestion, a better ability to resist disease-causing bacteria and fungi, reduced body fat, clearer skin, reduced allergies, better control of diabetes, and a healthier immune system overall. In Japan, there are several kosos available. Ours koso is 100% natural, vegan, and non-GMO. It contains over 100 ingredients, including vegetables, fruits, herbs, mushrooms, and seaweeds. It's been aged for one year. Ars Koso comes in concentrated form that is easy to take because it has a pleasant sweet flavor and can be easily mixed with water or seltzer water. It has a high prebiotic content. There are several ways of using Ars Koso. Probably the two most common ways is first as a daily supplement without fasting or secondly during a fasting cleanse.